Hello YouTube. Today I will continue my narrative about the space exploration in the Soviet Union. Some people already know that the call signs of the cosmonauts were, for example, Yuri Gagarin was cedar, like cedar tree, and Valentina Tereshkova was seagull. However, Soviet space explorers also had other code words. Moreover, a secret system was developed for each flight. The Soviet Union space program had always been shrouded in secrecy. This secrecy, as for example, Alexander Bezubtsov Kandakov wrote in his book, Why Did This Happen? Man Made Disasters in Russia. This secrecy in particular concerned various emergency situations that occurred during flights, as well as accidents and death of astronauts. That is why, according to Bezubtsov Kandakov, the path of the national space exploration or cosmonautics seemed triumphant and cloudless to the ordinary citizens of the USSR. However, such ideas had nothing to do with reality. Scientists were well aware that anything could happen in orbit, so they developed a special code system before each flight. So in case of an emergency, Gagarin had to switch from the automatic to manual control of the spaceship. However, he could only do it by typing a secret code. It is northworthy to know that according to Vyacheslav Klementov, the author of the publication Gagarin, The Amazing Story of the First Flight, even Yuri Gagarin himself did not know that code. The number 125 was written on paper. The sheet was sealed in an envelope and attached to the inner casing of the spacecraft next to the cosmonaut's chair. However, there is a hypothesis that before departure the code was still reported to Yuri Gagarin. Well, Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, like his followers, was obliged to inform the control center of the flight control center about the occurrence of any emergency situations. However, the problems could have occurred back on Earth. So according to Alexander Zhelezhnikov, author of the book Secrets of Rocket Disasters, in the summer of 1960, a spaceship carrying two dogs exploded before breaking away from the launch pad. Meanwhile, Gagarin, who was in an ejection seat, he had a chance of salvation in a similar situation. If events began to develop on the start um, control, not according to the script, Yuri Gagarin had to say the secret word. According to Yuri Marozhin, who wrote the book Roads to Space, the word Ivanhoe was chosen as the code. In general, code words were most often intended specifically for unforeseen circumstances. According to the memoirs of the author of the book The Female Face of Space, Valentina Panamareva, who at one time was the understudy of the first female cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova, all sorts of problems on the spaceship were supposed to be reported by a code, usually botanical, Dalaya, Oak, Elm. The word mountain ash during Tereshkova's flight meant, for example, that the cosmonaut was suffering from nausea. Other space explorers used their own code systems to indicate nausea and um, other conditions and situations. It is known that in the lexicon of the Soyuz 1 cosmonaut Vladimir Korovmarov, who perished in 1967, many code words had nothing to do with uh, uh, flora at all. Komarov's last words, which were heard in the mission control center, were the command passed accident 2. According to Yuri Zaitsev, on the pages of his digest, the difficult road to space, the code accident 2 did not imply a tragedy at all, but only uh, that uh, the landing had to take place with some overloads. The Vostok and Voskhod spacecraft landed in a similar mode or method. The brake engine on the Soyuz worked fine and the device switched to the trajectory of descent to the ground. Perhaps such an alarming code was designed for greater secrecy. Meanwhile, it happened that not only the spies, uh, foreign agents were confused, but that the flight managers themselves. According to Anton Pervushin, the author of the book The First in Space, Step into the Unknown, 
during the flight of Pavel Popovich, the code indicating the astronaut's poor health and the request for an early landing was the word thunderstorm. At some point, Popovich reported from the orbit, I see a thunderstorm. Uh, you know, the, Pavel Pop Popovich really watched a thunderstorm over the Gulf of Mexico through the porthole. However, the space exploration chief designer, the father of the Soviet space program, Sergei Karolev, did not take into the account the natural phenomenon of the same name. Thinking that Popovich was ill, he ordered, let's land him immediately. The misunderstanding, well, it was solved, but um, I want to uh, I want to talk about Pavel Popovich a little bit more. He made his first space flight aboard the uh, Vostok 4 spaceship in 1962. Later, Pavel Popovich, the first Ukrainian in space. Uh, not the first Ukrainian cosmonaut, but the first Soviet cosmonaut of Ukrainian descent. He was trained for a space flight under the auspices of the Soviet Moon Research Program. But after the program was closed, Popovich underwent training for flights aboard Soyuz spaceships. His second mission into space was as the chief pilot of the Soyuz 14 spaceship in 1974. The flight was part of the Soviet program of military use of space exploration technology. Popovich's call name was Berkut-1, Golden Eagle, having docked with Salyut 3 orbital station. This was a cover name for the secret battle station, Almas-2. Popovich and his engineer had conducted military intelligence operations. They had infrared and powerful optical equipment, 14 special cameras, and even one 30 millimeter cannon. That's what they had. One of the tasks was to capture the American Skylab station with three astronauts aboard. The Americans had a special nickname for Popovich. They called him Aggressor. The cosmonauts had sent their reports to Earth in special capsules, thus creating the first parcel dispatch from space. But the program was later shut down. Um, by the way, about Popovich, you should see my video about Popovich's revelation revelations about um, knowledge about aliens and alien bases on Earth uh, and a few more things about ufology. He was very important for the field of ufology in the Soviet Union. I won't get into it here, but you will find more about him in my uh, special playlist about cosmonauts in my channel. I really suggest you watch more about Soviet cosmonauts. I compiled a lot of stuff and uh, it took me years of research, but it's, it's tremendously important. Anyway, between the years 1980 to 1989, Popovich served as deputy chief of the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. In 1993, he was promoted to the rank of Air Force Major General in Reserve. He knew a lot, a lot. The secrecy surrounding Soviet space program was due to its military essence. So please consider this video as the introduction to the playlist in my channel about Soviet and later Russian and Ukrainian cosmonauts, their encounters with UFOs, their strange observations, and certain paranormal aspects of the space exploration and what space can do to human beings who are out there. And we, we, you don't hear everything that's happening to them. But you know, when you study this field of knowledge and um, this, you know, development of mankind in the space, you, you find out a few interesting things. It does come into press once in a while. Anyway, as mankind continues advance into outer space, it is important to remember those who made the first steps in this journey and the strange phenomena they had encountered. Kudos to all of them, American, Chinese, Soviet, and other space explorers. Brave people they are. I want to thank you for your attention to my research. If you can support me, there are ways to do it. Please see the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe and tell others. I appreciate your attention.